Here on this channel, we talk about a lot of wretched bikes, wretched Street Fighters, Busa, tiny little scooter things, and more on our It Came From Craigslist episodes. But I want to posit an idea to you. What if I told you that some manufacturers gifted us oddball motorcycles directly from the factory? Now, those of you who are more in the know about bikes are familiar that certain brands have given us some really really strange motorcycles, but today I wanted to showcase some of the strangest motorcycle models to ever roll off an official factory line rather than someone's backyard. Before we get started though, hello, it's me, Clammy Dude, Shammy Cube, Yammy Noob, back once again to deliver unto you insatiable little squids the motorcycle content you've come to know and love. If you're into keeping up with me, smash that subscribe button and hey, follow me on Instagram. There's loads of exclusive content and things on there that I just don't have the space to talk about here on YouTube and that's happening and it's a great way to keep up with me in real time. If you haven't heard yet, I am giving away motorcycles here on this channel as well. We've got this brand new KTM RC390 that's heading out, but more importantly, starting July 4th, we'll have a brand new Yamaha R3 and a brand new Suzuki SV650 ready to ship out to two lucky winners. Hit the link below on our Patreon to learn more about that and how you can get entered to win when we announce those bikes on July 4th. Now, let's get into these oddball bikes. First up is a bike that I featured on my It Came From Craigslist episode, and I didn't know anything about it at the time, and that is the Honda Rune. The Honda Rune is an exceptionally strange and rare bike made by Honda. It is a special edition of an already rare bike called the Valkyrie, which is basically a stripped down, old school cruiser style Goldwing with this enormous 1800cc Boxer 6 engine. I cannot stress to you enough how enormous the Rune actually is. Its wheelbase is 69 inches. <laughs> when most sport bikes are around 54 to 56 inches, giving it a massively stable stance and a propensity to want to keep moving in a straight line. However, even though the Rune was a gigantic motorcycle, it had a really innovative trailing bottom link suspension that allowed it to have a more sporty riding quality. Some folks might mistake the Rune for a Dodge Tomahawk, another really oddball bike, but the Rune was made by that conservative red Japanese brand Honda. Let's get a sound check for this bike. Now, it might sound a bit like a boat engine, but the Rune certainly doesn't fail to disappoint in the style department. If you're lucky to own one of these, you can rock up on any bike night and you're sure to strike up some conversation. Next up is a truly strange bike, and that is the Gilera CX. Looking literally like a motorcycle out of Akira, the anime, a Jalera CX is even stranger when you dig beneath its wacky fairings and paint job. The name CX is derived from the formula to determine drag coefficients, C over X, and the Jalera was all about reducing that number. The slippery fairings were designed to give riders the maximum ability to cut through the air as they rode along at high speeds. However, high speeds wouldn't really come much over 100 miles per hour given its 125cc two-stroke engine even if it does rev to well over 12,000 RPM. Now, the strangest thing about the CX is the suspension setup. If you look closely, it only has one dampening unit on each side. So from one side of the bike, it appears that it floats in midair, as it technically has two single-sided swing arms that hold it up into place. That's super weird. Let's get a sound check on the CX. Yep, that's a two-stroke 125cc, nothing too special there. It's one of the strangest bikes ever made, and it certainly looks like an award-winning haute couture design to this day. Ciao, Bella! Our next oddball should be familiar to you, and it's the Kawasaki H2, but not the new one, the original 1972 Mach 2 H2750. This bike was dubbed the Widowmaker when it first started rolling off showroom floors, and there's a good reason for that. With a three-cylinder, two-stroke, 750cc ripper of an engine, a single disc brake up front, and a suspension and chassis design from the 70s, this thing flexed, bucked, wheelied, and makes sure that unless you were Eddie Law 
lesson, you were going to have a bad time on it. The H2 was a hairy, burly bike that was an incredibly unforgiving as it came at a time that made little sense for Kawasaki to build such machines. Four stroke inline four engines were starting to come into the fold as the gold standard for Japan, but manufacturers were still toying around with different ideas. The H2 is lauded as one of the rowdiest bikes ever made, so let's get a sound clip of it. This Cowie could put down a sub 13 second quarter mile time in the early 70s which made it an absolute rocket ship and to this day they are incredibly sought after since they're such an odd machine. Our next bike is an absolutely crazy one from the land of pasta, Rossi and flirting with fascism and that is the Bimota Tezi 3D. Take a look at this thing. The Bimota Tezi 3D would stand out at any motorcycle show if you saw it and God help you if you brought this thing to a bike night because it would certainly cause a commotion. The Bimota Tezi 3D throws normal telescopic forks into the bin in favor of a hub centric front end. This makes it so braking and steering are separated which is always a good thing, however the design is not for the novice rider. This ingenious design basically makes it so there's virtually no dive under braking and the best part about this bike, it's powered by a Ducati V twin making all the right sounds. Let's listen. That 1078cc Ducati mill does sound nice, but you have to admit, you have to give hats off to Bimota for concocting such a bizarre and interesting bike. Because without companies pushing the envelope like this, we'd still all be on 500cc parallel twin bikes from Great Britain. Our next bike should be no stranger to you if you've been watching my channel for a while, and that is the Honda CBX. If you don't already know, I have a love affair with the Honda CBX. It's the only Japanese motorcycle to be produced with an inline six cylinder engine that's horizontally mounted and it is glorious. It was only produced for about four years as consumers favored four cylinder bikes, but I am so happy it existed even for the short amount of time that it did. The CBX has a sound unlike any other bike given those extra cylinders, and to this day, it is still such a strange motorcycle giving its honking and comically large six cylinder motor. However, everything else on this bike is pretty tame and standard. No trick suspension, no ch strange chassis setups, just a standard bike with six cylinders and a perfect engine sound. Let's listen. <laughs> the fact that Honda decided to produce this bike shows us how manufacturers took more risks back in the day, particularly in the 80s and 90s when it seemed like every bike was a chance to make something special. But I will keep my opining about the past to a minimum since I do prefer living in this timeline right now. Up next on our oddball bikes list is the Moto Guzzi Le Mans. You might not imagine that the Moto Guzzi Le Mans is an oddball bike when you look at it and it looks just like a regular old cafe bike or maybe something a little bit exotic from Italy, but take a closer look and it all becomes revealed. From its relatively low tech engine that's mated to a car like transmission, it's got shaft drive and a horizontally mounted V twin which is a Guzzi signature, and to me, that makes for a really weird bike. Reviewers at the time noted it had problems with the frame twisting, it was a strangely twitchy bike at low revs, let's get a sound check for that classic Guzzi engine. The Moto Guzzi Le Mans styling is copied and imitated to this day, so even though it was a bit of an oddball, it still shined as a bike to be copied, which I think is pretty cool. Our last oddball bike is none other than the Bruff Superior SS100. If you don't know anything about Bruff Superiors, fear not, you gon' learn today. The SS100 was designed so exactly and so precisely that it literally received permission from Rolls Royce to be deemed the Rolls Royce of motorcycles. Each Bruff Superior was given the guarantee to hit 100 miles per hour, which nowadays seems pretty low, but this bike was built in 1928, which makes it, in my mind, an extreme oddball. The fact that Bruff was building highly bespoke high speed missiles back in the 20s is extremely weird. Powered by a V-twin engine, even though you already know what that's going to sound like, let's get some of the clips of this strange Bruff.
The Bruff Superior SS100 is so sought after that it's several of them have sold for six figure sums at auction, which makes them even more odd in my opinion. So my dudes, that's gonna wrap it up for today. What do you think about these bikes? Are they strange enough, weird enough? Do you have any other recommendations about oddball bikes that we should include? Let me know in the comments below. I always love hearing from you guys. And if you don't already know, this video wouldn't be complete without me mentioning our Patreon. It started out as our beginner bike giveaway and we still do that. We've got two new motorcycles up for grabs. It's gonna be a Yamaha R3 and a Suzuki SV650. But in reality, this has grown to be one of the best communities for motorcyclists on the internet. Imagine a safe place where you can come, learn about bikes, ask questions, see exclusive content, and hang out with me. That's what our Discord server is. It's a chat room you can access on desktop or mobile, and it works just like Slack or TeamSpeak. Join over 683 members who have signed up. We've got channels specifically for newer riders, bike purchases, memes, and more. Oh yeah, you get additional chances to win the bike and you're automatically entered for free. You'll get access to live streams, polls to help us decide what to do with the bikes, and more. We also do weekly $100 gift card drawings for our members. Watch our weekly It Came From Craigslist videos to see how that works. So join us in creating the best exclusive motorcycle community on the internet. Hit the link below or go to patreon.com slash to get started. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. See you later.